Live from Los Angeles, welcome to Good Morning La La Land. I'm Rob Mack. This is Dr. Aaron. I have no voice. With no voice. So. And I'm Jessa Moyer, and this is Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Also available on Apple TV and Roku via the EverTalk app. And we yes. are going to talk about Wealth Wednesday very slowly, but I'm going to do my best. You are a you're trooper, gonna, you're, gonna <laughs> you're a trooper. It's not sexy. They say it's sexy. It's not sexy. You're always sexy. You always bring it, Aaron. <laughs> Absolutely. Wealth Wednesday, huh? Yeah, we're going to talk about the wealth of our relationships. Very important. Critical, actually. Speaking right? of yes. relationships, we have an incredible lineup of guests this morning. A record here today on Good Morning All Land. The Concern Foundation is in the house. Dr. Iris Orbach is back. And some very exciting others you definitely want to stay tuned in for. Yes, indeed. Event was amazing last night. Huh? I'm so sorry I missed it. That's all right. We've got some special B-roll we're going to show during their interview of their event at the Four Seasons for the book launch, Beating Endo. Super it was cool. Beautiful. I didn't know that 200 million women have endometriosis. I can't say it. Incredible. 100 million. Say it. Say 200 it for me. million women have endometriosis. <laughs> That's right. That's crazy. It's unbelievable. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Great cause. Which I guess is the precursor for cancer as well. We'll find out. I'm going to yeah. ask these questions. More details. Yes. Yes. The questions asked. Absolutely. So, where were you? Why? Oh, my goodness. Well, I've got, it's ESPY's week. Oh. So, I've got clients in town for the ESPY. So, I'm like meeting. Oh. And then, yeah, Just I didn't, no, 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 no. <laughs> not that I wouldn't, but I he doesn't. don't. Yeah, I'm not really a good. We drinker. talked about that. We did, yes. I was like, I can't that. party anymore because oh I had gosh. one glass of champagne. Yeah. I was a disaster the next day. Oh my God, totally. I have like a cup of coffee and I'm ready to bounce off the wall. It's like, it's uh, not, not me. I have one glass of champagne on my best self. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living my best so, life. But, true. Uh, <laughs> this whole thing's overrated because anytime you have any drinks and everything falls apart. I know, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Or everything gets that much better. It depends on your <laughs> perspective. So on how Hashtag Wealth Wednesday. Let's talk about the wealth in our yes. relationships. Yeah, so I think it's interesting because <clears throat> so we know that the environment we put ourselves in is super important. Bruce Limpton had the book, yes. Biology of Belief, and basically showed that cells actually turn on genetic code depending on the environment they're in. So we actually are, we're influenced by the people that are in our lives. So who is your inner circle? Mm. Very yes. important. It's a good question, right? Yeah. I mean, what is, you know, asking you out there, what are you know who are you hanging out with what what are their you know what, who are they what, you know ethically integrally what is that because it's going to rub off on you no this is an interesting it. conversation though because most of us have had that relationship with they're the bad boy the bad girl and you think ooh, but i'm going to help save them mm. right save like, your complex yeah you're going to rub off on that yeah well it's an interesting thing because in aa if you're with an addict you actually will become an addict it's mm. actually like a matter of time before wow. you become an, an out on a, a codependent. Because if you're with an addict, we have mirroring you know, cells and yeah. it's a matter of time. Yeah, we talk about that a lot even in the positive psychology world, like the effect and the impact of emotional contagion. It's like, um, you know, when somebody practices a certain habit or they tend to, you know, sort of express or embody a certain emotion consistently enough, it will eventually rub off on you. Right. And it is like extends at least five people out, right? It's kind of crazy. So Be it's really careful. important. It's actually dangerous. Yeah. Hang out with people that are, you know, not like having a hard time. Yeah, that's why I just hang out with myself. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Love my aloneness. It's unbelievable. But I will say, like, as I was like, you know, when I first made a decision to be more intentional about my life, that was probably one of the first things that I began to like vet for. Not because mm -hmm. I wanted to exclude people, but just I knew that that's I needed true. really healthy, happy, supportive people in my life, and so I just try to do the best I could. It's hard. I out, remember right? there was one girlfriend that I absolutely loved. There was like chemistry. We'd have a yeah. great time, but it was very, she was all over the place. Yeah. And one day I just had to say, universe, she's all yours. <laughs> I love her yeah. unconditionally and she no longer belongs in yeah. my life. I just can't do it. Well, I love that. It's a good point. It's like so much easier to love a lot of people from a distance, right? Mm. So you don't have to, very just because a relationship ends doesn't mean you have to stop loving them. Right. Doesn't mean you have to stop being friendly towards them. No, you know. definitely not. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So, um, so yeah. I think we should take a break because we have amazing guests in the house. Absolutely. Yes. And before we come back with our special guests, we have a look at last year's Concern Foundation annual block party happening at Paramount Studios again this year on July 13th. So stay tuned. We've got a great interview with one of the men being honored and the president of the Concern Foundation himself, Derek Albert. Stay tuned. My name is Lily Bourdon, and you're watching Good Morning La La Land. You're watching Good Morning La La Land. Good Morning La La Land. Good Morning La La Land. My name's Savannah Kennick, and you're watching Good Morning La La Land. You're watching Good Morning La La Land. My name is Rex Wilder, and you're watching Good Morning La La Land. You're watching Good Morning La La Land. 
You're watching Good Morning La La Lake. Celebrating 50 years of superheroes, researchers, donors, and volunteers, I'm Jess Moyer, welcoming you to the Concern Foundation's annual block party here at Paramount Studios. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with last year's honoree, Ms. Eden Alpert. Tell us a little bit about your connection to the foundation. Uh, my cousin Derek Alpert has been the president for over 20 years, and I have been coming to this since he was just a volunteer with uh, Concern, and it's always been very special to the family and to my heart, and it's such an amazing cause and what a great event to do every year. Well you know I think it's a great foundation because it's dealing with cancer and it's making a difference plus they're combining the superhero motif which I think is really great. That's why I'm wearing a cape. Do you have a most memorable moment from the years that you've been spending here? Well last year <laughs> you just gave me goosebumps. Last year was pretty memorable. It was overwhelming. I get a little <laughs> I can't believe I got emotional. I get a little emotional because last year it was something really big. I've never been honored like that before. And to be here with the whole family, and it's just an incredible night. I want to thank everybody who's donating tonight because the money that's raised really goes a long way in our battle against childhood cancer. I run the program at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We're grateful to all. Derek Alpert and everybody involved with concern for the funds that are raised are really vital to our research. Let the games begin. Welcome back to Good Morning Lala, and today we are California Dreaming to Conquer Cancer with the Concern Foundation. Thank you so much, Eric, for being back on the show Thank to you. celebrate this year. And John, you're being honored Lifetime King uh, Award. With our family, yes, we're being honored this year. Uh, very, very proud, very, very happy to be um, honored and to be as involved as my family has been for many, many years. Mm. Nice. Tell us a little bit about your journey with the foundation. Uh, our journey... Um, we actually have four generations of our family who've been involved um, with the Concern Foundation. And it all kind of started because, like so many of these things, uh, my father lost his sister to cancer and wanted to get involved. And we had a uh, business in Beverly Hills called Carol and Company, which was a men's store. 
uh, and at that time it was on Rodeo Drive, and my father was sort of the impetus for starting this big block party, um, which was on Rodeo Drive at the time. And we were there for 20 years or something. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew. I got involved as a little kid. You know, I used to blow up balloons and I used oh. to, you know, unpack folding chairs and things a oh. long, long time ago. Excuse my voice, but You're I do want to say. So I believe that one in four Americans will be diagnosed with cancer. So what is the actual goal with the foundation? The goal is really simple. We, are, we need to fund research, basic research, so they can understand what cancer is. You can't cure or conquer something until you understand what it is. Mm, right. And scientists don't really understand what cancer is. So our goal is to fund as much research as possible to understand the disease so that then they can come up with better treatment options and really get a handle on how to take this cancer that, become, that goes from a dormant state in your body to an active state, put it back into that dormant state so that you can live a normal, healthy life with cancer. Yes. And how does this block party help give back? You know, this block party is our 45th year, as you know. It's an incredible outpouring of individuals and businesses around Los Angeles. They come together every year. There'll be about 4,000 people. Wow. Uh, we're going to raise uh, probably a little over $1.8 million in one day so that we can fund researchers across America, around Los Angeles, and around the world so they can understand cancer and let's try and put an end to it. I love that. Just wow. Yeah. yeah. It's so interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I love the idea of sort of doing good while also helping people feel good in the process, you know? And so can you tell us a little bit about your journey with the foundation? You know, I started as a volunteer. Uh, I was actually, as John was blowing up balloons on Rodeo <laughs> Drive, so was I. And I was actually there with his father uh, at the end of the night, sweeping down Rodeo Drive and washing it down so the stores could open up the next morning. I was asleep by that point. <laughs> <laughs> Knocked out. Yeah. Knocked but, out that late. But it really, it, it resonated with me the first time, it was uh, 1979, when I was invited to go to Children's Hospital. And I got off the elevator on the fourth floor, and I saw just these long hallways with two and three children in a room without hair, with IVs, parents holding these babies, and I started uncontrollably sobbing. And I said, if, I'm, if there's a breath left in me, I'm gonna do everything I can to be involved so that no other family has to go through what they went through. So I did it as a volunteer for many years, and for the last 16 years, I've been the full-time president of the organization. Wow, just incredible. Mm -hmm. What's been your greatest challenge in growing the foundation and growing the awareness around this cause? I think the challenge is getting more people involved. It's really about bringing young people and old people and all generations together. You know, it's not political. It's not about anything other than when you know somebody or you get that call personally from your doctor that says you have cancer, it's to know that you've been able to do something that it won't be a fatal condition as it has been in the past. We've and been pretty good about getting young people involved, too. And that's sort of going to be the way that the organization is going to be able to perpetuate through the years. Not that we want to perpetuate it. I mean, as, mm -hmm. as Derek said on that video, I think we're one of the only companies or organizations that tries to be out of business. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, you know, it's a millennial world in many ways. My kids are, are involved. My, my daughter worked for Concern for a couple of years. My other two kids have all volunteered. We have. Uh, a number of families that have four generations like ours um, that have that have been involved for for many many years, and it's it's sort of as Derek has, has said, um, you know, get, getting the word out, um, bringing in you know younger voices and younger ideas to to continue to to grow the the cause. Well, an, an annual block party is just the space to do that. Yes, it is. We had the best time last year. Thank you for again inviting us back. You're always we'll be wild. there this Saturday, July 13th on the Paramount Studios back lot. Right. Are tickets still available? Tickets are available. We are just rounding the corner of 4,000 people that wow. will be there. There'll be about 70 wow. restaurants. Oh, Paramount out. has been tremendously generous to us. We've got some wonderful sponsors this year. Um, 
Uh, the Zacuto Group is sponsoring our, our silent auction this year, and we've got a, a company called The Good Print that's doing our photo studio. We have four stages of entertainment. Los Angeles Magazine is involved for the 15th year in a row, and it's just a, an amazing coming together of nine-year-olds to 90-year-olds, all there for one purpose, which is to raise as much money and have a good time to celebrate another year of being able to get closer to conquering cancer. Oh, thank you for helping us California dream and conquer That's cancer. Please tell everyone where they can find Fallow, get involved, buy tickets. You can go to the Concern website, uh, concernfoundation.org, uh, or you can call our office, go to our website, the phone number is on there. Uh, it's gonna be a great time. We are so excited to have all of you back and the support that we get from, from you know, the media and from our corporate partners and individuals is just, it's tremendous. It is a wonderful event. I mean, we've been you know, going for, for many years. <clears throat> um, and just the way the event is put on, uh, the organization, uh, the restaurants that come, the wineries that, that, that join us, the entertainment people. And keep in mind, most of everything is donated. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you know, we like to say we're cheap. I mean, we don't like to pay for a lot of things because the more we pay for, the less we're able to, sure. to give to, to researchers at the end of the, at the, end of the event. So, um, you know, hats, hats off to all of our, our sponsors and our restaurants and everybody who, who does a great, great job for us. Absolutely. Thank you, well, thank you so, much. Thank so you. much, gentlemen. Station, we'll be back for more. Good morning, Lala. Watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co founder and host of Ever Talk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. We all crave connection. I, I'm a big fan of videoing a podcast. The impact that I'm having people on a podcast wow. is I'm having more impact on, on those people than I ever did in news. We want to be heard, but we also need to listen. Podcasts, I understand they are red hot. It's actually remarkable how scary to me podcasting is. Everybody should have a podcast. I really wondered why. I mean, we've been doing this for 12 years. Nobody has done this uh, right. in other arenas. We have to change the conversation to happiness over financial success. It was like, we have to. We have to. Honestly, it was meeting new people who had already heard about what we have done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, nice. Mm. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Yeah. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is <laughs> you can binge watch. And binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch. Or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch. And binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Entertainment that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lala. And we are here with Andrew Pifko. He is an award winning actor, modern day Renaissance man, and we're talking daddy issues. Yes. We are, we are talking daddy issues. <laughs> we all have issues. Some of us just have tissues, but I have Daddy Issues, the feature film. <laughs> Tell us about it. Uh, daddy Issues is uh, it's a beautiful film, dark drama. Uh, it's a love triangle uh, between. Uh, uh, it begins with an estranged relationship between myself and my daughter. We've been apart for a few years. Uh, then I, to sort of fill that gap in my life, uh, I take on a lover who it turns out is also the lover of my daughter. Whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so uh, that's wild. It's wait, pretty wild. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's actually wait. What is actually the tagline of our film? Oh, that's great. Oh. Um, uh, I wish it was. I uh, right. uh, no, it's uh, it's. I mean, ultimately, it's about um, you know the the gaps that we have in our lives and how we try to fill them. Uh, with love, with lust, with compassion, uh, with loss. 
uh, and it's a beautifully written film. We've had you know the good fortune to just uh, just be distributed, uh, and it's available now across North America. But uh, yeah, we toured the world to a lot of festivals and. Uh, uh, beautifully designed, beautifully shot, and it just tells a really good story, very simply, very beautifully. Just wow. So you are certainly disrupting the film festival circuit. <laughs> now you're streaming yeah. worldwide, yeah. all platforms, but what do you think the audience main takeaway is? Uh, I think that we have, that nature abhors a vacuum. Mm. And, and we try to fill it with whatever we have to, I mean certainly, you know, when you perform a role like that, you, you don't say like, how would I take on a lover? You think, what loss do I have in my life and, and how would I fill it? Uh, so I think the audience takeaway might be, they'll see a film like this and think, yeah, there is that loss in my life. He filled it like that, how am I gonna fill it in my life? I love that. So, <clears throat> we'd love to hear your own personal journey. Sure. How did you come, what was your journey into where you are right now, being an actor? Uh, sure, uh, I actually, I'm originally from Canada, from Toronto and, uh, Started acting there, took a dark, dark detour where I got my degree in microbiology. Wow. And, uh, you know, yes. Very it's a horrible thing. It is you a know, dark a, path. Yeah, there. that's right. My, actor, my parents were like, what are you doing? You know, just, just be an actor. Don't go into science yeah. and throw your that's life away. That's what every parent says. Right? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, found my way, started into musicals and then film, took me to London, uh, eventually to New York. I was there for a couple of years. Uh, over the last few years, I've been in LA and uh, Knock Marble. Uh, it's uh, it's been going well. So just uh, it's a nice right now. It's a nice mix of film. Uh, I'm doing this amazing musical called More Guns, the NRA musical. Uh, right now at Second City in Hollywood, which I encourage everybody to come see. I love that. Um, so it's a nice uh, it's nice to have that balance to have sort of the micro lab of film as well as the exuberance of, uh, mm. of musicals live on stage. Well, and a lot of our audience might recognize you from the Stella Artois commercial. Mm. Yeah. What was that experience like? Uh, it's, it's just, it's a juggernaut. I mean, it's the Super Bowl, it's Sarah Jessica Parker, oh. it's Jeff Bridges, like just all of these forces coming together in a perfect storm. And, and I have to say, for, for all of the you know, logistics and money and power that's involved, they could not have been sweeter. Mm -hmm. Just, just you know, I, my experience has been uh, that the bigger they are, the more that they understand how hard the path is, uh, and the more genuine and uh, congenial they are to people who are sort of along the path. Wow, so wow. interesting. So, you know, I want to go back to this question sort of around like your personal journey and sure. your whether it was a hard path or easy path. Was it mostly just an upward sort of trajectory for you in terms of your career, or was it? Like most right. folks, it was ebbs and flows. It's always ebbs and flows. Yeah. Uh, you know, when the going's good, uh, you squirrel it away. Mm. And uh, when it's bad, you still treat yourself to sushi. And sometimes you treat <laughs> yourself to some treats like this. Oh, uh, oh. our producer's going to pass us See how I sent me that oh, in? Wow. Pass oh, it in. Wow. Because it's Wealthy Wednesdays, oh, wow. I made something last night that was as rich as I could you possibly make it. This is Thank like a little, little thing from Canada called Nanaimo bars. Yeah. Uh, is anybody allergic to anything? Pineapple. No. Okay, no <laughs> This is a three-layer. This is a three-layer treat. We've got gram wafer, coconut, and walnut in the bottom oh. layer. A little bit of Tia Maria, uh, icing sugar, and egg whites. And the top layer is sort of a dark chocolate. Is there a bit of tequila in there? Yes, but who knows? <laughs> you know, you are more the than first welcome. Yeah. of over 4,000 guests to bring us a homemade treat. You truly are a Dear diary. Victory <laughs> achieved. You um, know the way to my home. These, uh, these are incredibly sweet, incredibly rich. Mm. Uh, if you want. Probably I good for the voice area. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Chocolate, it coats the throat. Oh, no, oh, it's like ice cream. If you like low calorie, um, low calorie, low sugar, like good nutritious, this is not the snack. Not at all. The <laughs> tequila alone oh, yeah. no, is going to throw most people's diets. It, yeah. My voice is back. Yeah. Um, so this is, is really good, good actually. Thank you. Wow. It'll grow with flavor. So oh. this is, um, you treat yourself, in answer to your question, you treat yourself well. Mm. Uh, because it is never a smooth line. Um, mm. And it's never like the horrible defeats. It's always just like death by a thousand bee stings. Yeah. The people who are like, they're almost there for you, but not completely there for you. Dramatically, logistically, in terms of business. So you have to be your own HR department. You have to be your own Very coach. True. And that's yeah. true of, of so many professions. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much mm. for your true kindness, for the, for the art you're bringing into the world. Absolutely. Please remind everyone where they can find, follow your personal journey, and see Daddy issues. Sure, absolutely. Um, so right now, if anybody's in uh, Hollywood, please come to see More Guns at Second City. Uh, it's an amazing musical. We just got extended to August 17th, so Second City, More Guns. Uh, and Daddy Issues is on uh, Google Play, iTunes, Video On Demand. Um, and I'm at uh, Andrew Pifko on Instagram. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Andrew. So much. Thank Andrew. You Stay so tuned. Much. We'll be back with more Good Morning All Led.
Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? EverTalk TV, the Netflix of talk. In a digital media world filled with incredible podcasts that are the evolution of radio, EverTalk is bringing this audio experience to television. I'm Jezza Moyer, the co-founder and host of EverTalk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. EverTalk is an entertainment and lifestyle platform that illuminates consciousness and showcases inspiring stories that offer insight, inspiration, and thought-provoking conversations on positivity, wellness, insta-fame, and empowerment, all while celebrating the trials and triumphs of those who are igniting a positive change in the world. These curated talk shows are hosted by passionate, talented personalities who themselves have been inspired by others to give back through their on-air efforts and create a community to helping our viewers live the life they truly deserve. New binge-worthy content is added daily and our EverTalk algorithms are designed to give our subscribers the programming they really desire. These shows are streamed in high definition and are available online and across all major video platforms, including Apple TV and Roku. EverTalk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30-day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere at EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land live from Los Angeles. So if you like dance and you like plyometrics, you're going to love our next guest. They're the founders of PlyoJam. Jason and Stacy. welcome to the show. Hi, hey we're so Hi. happy to be here. Now, I have got to say, I had the honor of doing a PlyoJam class, and I have never had more fun working out. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that's the secret, right? You don't want to feel like you're being tortured while you're no. shredding calories. Okay. You want so. to forget about it. You get through the whole hour, and you're like, did I just work out? Oh, yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just burning 100 calories. Weird. Yeah. yeah, I mean, literally, it couldn't be oh, more yeah, fun just to dance it out. So, where did this journey begin for you guys? Started in 2013. I created it um, because I just, there were women that just in my classes that were like, just make this work out a little harder. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> so I took the idea of plyometrics and I said, let's weave this into hip hop dancing. And so that's exactly what I did. And just enough though, I didn't want everybody complaining about the jumping um, <laughs> because these ladies were between the age of probably 30 and 50. It was at a country club, so they were a little older. Um, so I had to make sure that they could handle it, and they did. And so from there, I just kind of grew, and then brought Stacy on, um, 2014, as co-founder. Yeah. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. And yeah. you know, hashtag Wealth Wednesday. We talk a lot about building a business. Mm -hmm. We know neither one of you actually had a business background. <laughs> so how did you navigate you know. that? That's been very well. It's been a very interesting journey, and continues to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I was a public school teacher. Jason was an actor in, in a boy band, and we were both like budgets and business plans and what's happening here. But you know, you just learn as you go, and it's been wonderful. And um, you know, a, a big thing is networking. So really reaching out to people who have those skills. Right. We could run your business. That's well, how good we are. Well, I love that idea. We're, we're at that point now. <laughs> yeah, um, like we've learned so much that what do you need? <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my gosh, be careful. We've got lots of <laughs> right. jobs and responsibilities so here. Get back to the dance though a yeah. little bit because what makes this workout different? What's unique about that? So I think that you know there's a lot of follow along dance fitness workouts out there. This is very niche because of the plyometrics and the way they're woven into the dance. So you experienced yeah. it again. You you're not really. It's kind of like when you hide vegetables in a baby's smoothie. And they're like, I had no idea this was so good for me. It's so yummy. I'm an adult and I still do that. With me. I just stuck the kale in the smoothie. Yeah, yeah, so it remains fun, but it's a huge calorie burn. So we're really the first dance fitness format that has cornered the market on blending plyometrics with right. dance. And, and it's that extra plyometrics is what's causing the extra calorie burn. You don't realize just jumping off the ground does a lot. It's not easy. <laughs> just, just that little bit of elevation gets your heart rate going. And a lot of classes don't offer that unless you're doing like a hit training or some sort right. of like calisthenic class. That's L like, <coughs> excuse know, my voice again. Um, that's okay. LA is like, it's, it seems like it's the birthing place of all the newest, hippest, you know, 
new workouts. How are you guys planning on taking it? Are you like, you know, doing this one here and then going to take it nationally? We've already it's taken wow. it. Out. You're all over the it's place. Where, <laughs> where, so where are you? So we currently, the, most of the live classes are here in Los Angeles in various studios, more dancing, knockout, be crystal clear, a lot on the west side. We have some, uh, you know, scattering of classes in other states, but then we also have an online membership. Got so it. we have, I was just checking and I think we have over 28 countries represented within our online nice. membership. Wow. So, so I was just filming a class the other day and I was like, I see you, Tokyo. What's up, Belgium? <laughs> What's up, Spencer Because that's who we've got. Yeah. How incredible. Isn't that cool? Is that, I mean, and this really is a very community feel, yeah. right? And it's so body positive. It is. Women yes. of all ages, all shapes, mm -hmm. all sizes. Yeah. And that's one of the things we focus on. Very much so. I think, you know, as I, when I came on as a partner, I was kind of behind the scenes and like, I'll just do the emails. But then I realized how much people wanted to see not only, you know, hot stuff Jason, and I'm not saying I'm not hot stuff, but someone they also like recognized in themselves when I was yeah. in the front of the camera. Interesting. So tell us about yeah. your event happening this Friday. Yes, so we just um, came up with a new, can you tell them where the studio well, is? We, well, the, the studio is in Santa Monica. Okay. It's called Be Crystal Clear. Um, we're now partnered with them, so they're going to be holding a lot of Plyo Jam classes there, which is great. Yes. Um, so but we're, yeah, we're kicking off that partnership. We're kicking off Friday that partnership night. with yeah. yeah. So that's at 7:30, and it's it's, it's kind of cool. This studio focuses on um, sound baths. Um, if you've never, if you have you ever done oh, that? Oh, we were yes. fans. You know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've never done Friday. one. Yeah. We'll the see you Crystal Friday Fair night. Is on Eighth and Broadway. Yeah, exactly. In Santa Monica. Yeah, in Santa Monica. So it's, it's dance and chill. So it's Plyo Jam first followed by a, a meditative sound bath. And what makes this class special is we're going to be teaching it together. Yeah, yeah. to and get both of us together is pretty rare. It's so. very rare, so we're kind of excited. We'll see you guys come early. <laughs> you know, People so can get tickets if they go to the bio in our Instagram link. They're, the ticket's right there, and they can use code PlyoJam to get a little discount. Awesome. So please yeah. tell everyone what your Instagram is so they can find and follow you. It's at PlyoJam, P-L-Y-O-J-A-M. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Thank Stay you. tuned. We'll be back with more in Good Morning Wildland. Thank you. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? EverTalk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co-founder and host of EverTalk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. You can binge watch. And binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch. And binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. uplift and empower you anytime anywhere on evertalk tv your home for talk live from los angeles welcome back to good morning lawland i am so excited to welcome amy and joseph to the show thank you so much for being with us today thanks for having me guys by the way thanks. speaking of pineapple real clean loving this shirt real thank clean you. you came with my kind of festive thing LA, the weather's good right now, right? Yeah. So it's kind of I saw you jamming out when we were dancing into the show. Yeah, y'all got the right mood. Yeah. <laughs> you got the right mood. You get a whole check free workout going on. <laughs> Your star is so on the rise right Thank now. You. Epic Snowfall, the Baywatch Rebuild. Tell us everything. What's been happening? Well, we also have Stuber coming out this weekend. So um, Snowfall, first of all, it airs tonight. It premieres tonight. And this season three is epic. Um, of course, we have the late John Singleton. Is, he's with us in spirit. And um, I mean, he inspired some great television. I, I want to go on a record and say that this is the best thing that John has done since, uh, I would say, you know, Poetic Justice or, or Rosewood. Mm -hmm. um, definitely wow. a legend. But this, this, um, this television series, um, it has historical content. And um, I think it's timely. What have you learned about yourself in being a part of this series? Three seasons, incredible, mm. iconic 
Hollywood entertainers? I think the thing that I've learned the most is to be unapologetically yourself, mm -hmm. um, to be able to speak truth to power, um, and that there's a circle of truth around our heads right. as entertainers, as mm -hmm. creatives, to, to give that truth to an audience. And um, I think that the producers, the writers of the show have empowered us mm -hmm. to do such. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Was that a challenge for you growing up? Mm -hmm. It was for me. No, it, it probably, it, it probably, I, I spoke out of turn a lot. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I, got a, I got in a lot of trouble. I was kind of uh, yeah, a precocious guy. But I think that knowing how to empower um, yourself and each other, you know, how to talk to people, how to talk with compassion, you know, that there's a way to get a message across. I think um, I've learned that over the yeah, years. Yeah, that takes time. <laughs> so when you're not busy on screen, we know you're also involved with the awareness movement. Yeah. Can you speak to us a little bit about that? Well, the awareness movement came out of the, um, again, wanting to connect to um, my peers as actors and to the community at large uh, to bring awareness to voting in underserved neighborhoods where a lot of um, the citizens there would have felonies and weren't able to vote and that they to realize that we still wanted to empower communities that feel underrepresented in the political process because we never want to have a society where some of the people feel like they're not represented at all. I think that that can lead to people feeling that they're um, disenchanted mm -hmm. and not a part of the process. Yeah, it's interesting. I saw a statistic, and I don't know how accurate it is, but it essentially said that less than 46% of U.S. voters came out to vote in the last presidential election, which is kind of it's wild. A shame. That means that we're really not um, infecting people; that they are part of, um, that they are citizens; that they are part of this process; that this is their way. This is the right. true freedom that comes with citizenship. So, question for you: How do you think you became so conscious? Like, was, it, was your upbringing? Did you do a lot of research? Like, well, I came you... up in Harlem, USA. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Harlem, New York. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's always been a a circle of truth, of integrity, and I have great parents. My mom mm -hmm. is from South Carolina, my dad is from Antigua, West Indies, and um, they instill, you know, they raised the boy up right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Did you know you always wanted to be in entertainment? You know what, I was in sports, and um, I realized I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> happens to all of us, And man. I said, you know what, what is the thing, what is another thing that I can put uh, some of this energy in, um, and that I could learn a craft that could stay with me forever? And, that's what acting is to me. Even if I wasn't doing it professionally, I would find some way to entertain myself at least. <laughs> ah, well, right. we know our audience can be entertained this weekend with the film, so tell us a little bit about it where they can see it. Well, you can definitely see uh, Stuber nationwide and um, Snowfall airs tonight, 10 p.m. on FX. Fantastic. Mm. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow your personal journey. Eamon Joseph across all social media platforms. And if they want to get involved with the awareness movement, because it is so important. Definitely DM me. Drop it in the DM. Yeah. <laughs> right Drop it in the DM right there. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. really appreciate it. Stay Thank tuned. You.
live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning La Land. I'm so excited to welcome Lane Garrison to the show. We are celebrating the home entertainment release of the Iron Orchard. Yes, yes, that's right. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry about your voice. No, 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 I know you're a trooper for being here. But um, I'm really pumped about this movie. It comes out August 6th on demand and on Blu-ray, DVD, streaming, uh, on iTunes, etc. And it released in February 22nd. Uh, of this year in theaters, and I went around the country meeting everybody. I did about 32 Q and A's, and the response for this film has just been incredible. Wow. It was made on a true independent budget, mm -hmm. and it looks like a $30 million studio film, and it wow. won Best Picture in Rome, in Greece, wow. in Madrid, at AFF, Lone Star, um, kind of across the country. It's been received just incredible, and we did it in 24 days. Wow. A, an epic that covers about 20 years of this man's life who I played, Jim McNeely, so. Let's take a look at the trailer for yeah. The Iron Orchard. Oil men want respect. It's a disease. Makes most crazy. Others crooked. Breaks the hearts of the strong and rewards a few lucky ones with wealth and power beyond their deserving. Jim McNeely. You came here with something to prove. Now, I don't know to who. This here's my ticket out of here, fellas. We're in the oil business now. I wish you'd let some of these deals pay out before we get in any deeper. They want you to shut down. I'm drilling a well right now that will pay off everybody. What are you going to do with more money? Where do you stop wanting? Wow, it's beautifully wow. done. Yeah, so, yeah, question yeah. for you. Okay. What is beyond the power grid? What is there for you? In my own life? Yeah. My, my 11 month old daughter who kept me oh. up all night. <laughs> so for me, yeah, that's been, that's been the driving force Amazing. of my life and my, my beautiful wife back home. I mean, for me, family's been everything. And that that's the driving force to the career. The movies are great. And I love what I do. But that's, you know, kind of why I do it. And what's beyond the power and greed in the movie? Well, that's why you got to watch the movie. <laughs> I mean, if I answer that, nobody will see the film. I mean, it's got a really great twist. So a lot of people don't know this is based on a book from 1966, mm -hmm. a guy by the name of Tom Pendleton, who was really Edmund Van Zant wrote this book and everyone from Elvis Presley, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, George Brevard were attached to play my character at one point and they could never get it made, Clint Eastwood. And uh, they finally cracked the script, my director Ty Roberts and uh, my manager who's behind camera right now, they, you know, these guys brought me this script and I read it on page one and I said, I'm in, this is beautiful writing. I didn't even know it was a book and uh, I'm just so happy that we, we did it. We, we made the film in West Texas in the middle of summer, which I do not recommend. It was, <laughs> it, yeah, it was 117 degrees for 17 straight days. Oof. And most of that film, as you see, it was done outside. And this crew was amazing. Wow. And uh, we didn't, because of independent budget, and we only had 24 days, I only had one or two takes, and nothing was done in order. So they'd be like, you're 45 years oh. old. <laughs> I'd throw on a fat suit, they'd gray my hair, and they'd say, okay, now you're back to being 20 years old, and I'd strip in the middle of the field. And it was oh like doing a one-man play, but <laughs> for me, it's been 20 years in the making for me. Wow. This has been a hard career, and for me to be number one on the call sheet and the lead of a film, uh, you know, kids go, how do I do it? I go, you put in, put in the work. Right. It was 20 wow. years, mm -hmm. I got out to LA when I was 18 with $400 and like a broken down car. I was one of those kids mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I just worked really hard and I stayed Good true and, and believed yeah. myself. That is yeah. the Hollywood dream. And even it on was. your Instagram, it's, it's so funny. It says, from prison break to prison guard in Camp X-Ray, someone better call Saul. Yeah, those were, if those were, thir I mean, you know, everyone asks me what's a favorite role and it, it always varies, but prison break kind of started my career. And uh, I did a movie with Kristen Stewart called Camp X-Ray, which I always wanted to open the Sundance Film Festival and we did that. It was kind of like there's checklist on the career, you know, you want to hit, and um, and I did Better Call Saul as well, the um, the Breaking Bad spinoff, and so my career's been 
It's been great. I was telling him earlier, I said, it's, you know, it's a, like a roller coaster ride. You're going to have great moments and great highs, and you're going to have lows. And I tell kids all the time that want to act, and, you know, they think it's all movie stars and glitz and glam. I'm like, you just have to love it. You have to love what you do because there's going to be struggles. Wow. So Thank so you for being yeah. so honest and vulnerable about your journey. And congratulations on the massive success. Please Thank remind you. everyone again where they can get the Iron Orchard so this August. So August 6th, it'll be on demand. It'll be on iTunes and it'll be on Blu-ray DVD. And uh, check out the theironorchardfilm.com. Is that right? And yeah. find, and follow, find <laughs> and follow you. Find and follow me on the Lane Garrison. And uh, trust me, you'll get sick of me talking about this movie because That's I'm awesome. so proud of it. And it's just an incredible film. Congratulations. Stay tuned. We'll be back more on Good Morning Lala Land. Thanks. Welcome back to On That Note. Welcome to Defining Moments. Welcome to my show, Serena Live. And you're watching How to Start. And welcome to another episode of Sipping the Tea. We're bringing you inspiring stories to help you upgrade your life to the best level of success, health, and wealth. You can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch. Or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Entertainment that will inspire, uplift, and empower you. Anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. It's Wealth Wednesday, and what a better way to celebrate Wealth Wednesday than to talk about thriving. We've got Coach Lala here with us. She's the owner of Thrive Health Club. Hello. 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 Hey. We, like your name. we like your name. Thank you. Yeah, Lala, la, <laughs> like it's the perfect fit. It is. <laughs> On brand. So tell us about what your specialty is. Uh, my specialty, um, I'm a personal trainer. I'm also a certified corrective exercise specialist. Um, and we do a, a array of things at the actual gym. But my specialty is corrective exercise. Oh, let, let's take a look at what you do. People come to Thrive because of the, because of the community. Because everybody in here is just so cool. <laughs> is, that's what it is. Everybody has a smile on their face at 5 in the morning working out. Support the community. Uh, the people are great. It's like a family. It has really good energy. Um, it's really positive. Everyone just kind of supports each other and it's about like being your best self. And this is the only place I've ever been that cares as much about the person's mind and their heart as their fitness. Uh, love the positivity. Love that. Mm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. When you decided to start this, did you initially mean for it to be a place where it was just about positive energy? What was your inspiration? Uh, my inspiration for owning the gym in my community um, was there was nothing there. Um, I had to drive like 20, 15 minutes to get the type of classes that I love to do. Dance classes, hit classes, TRX classes, yoga and just having a sense of community. Um, I saw a need, and so I was like, you know what, let's open something heart in the heart of you park. Yeah. I love that. <clears throat> so where'd you start from there? Did you look for a facility? Did you, what, yeah, so I started off about five years ago as a personal trainer. I would go to people's houses, I would go to parks, um, and then in about 2016, I had a business partner originally, and we opened up a gym in View Park. We found a perfect place in View Park. Um, more recently, we closed that gym, opened a new gym in April called Thrive Health Lab. And so now we're just empowering, educating the community. So what kind of effect have you seen on this community? Besides results, the biggest effect that I've seen on the community is people really seeing their best selves and being able to be, meet them where they are, 
Um, we have people that have gone from introverts to extroverts. We have people that are just decided that they can even do a push-up, um, and that some people also just feel wanted there, like they mm. feel like it's home. Like people have told me it's their home. They come there to kind of release, and sometimes they don't invite some of their family. So like, <laughs> this is my private space. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to have anybody else come. I'm a true believer that the future is going to come down to community. Mm -hmm. People are depressed. They're having major health issues. Mm -hmm. And just fitness doesn't solve it. Most of the fitness instructors are going towards mindfulness, spirituality, and stuff because they know we got to deal with what's really going on. So how are you so smart enough to figure that out? Well, aside from the classes that we have starting at 5 in the morning to like 8 or 9 at night, we also do um, quarterly workshops, which we call Elevate Lab. So what we do, we bring um, people that are educated in the field of maybe um, goal setting, uh, finance, mm -hmm nutrition, so that we can give them a holistic and well-rounded approach to fitness and health and wellness so that they can be better people for the world. Oh, that's that's so incredible. Right? Please tell everyone where they can find and, and follow you mm -hmm. and the Health Lab. Uh, you can follow me at Coach underscore, I mean Coach Lala underscore V. Um, the gym is at Thrive Health Lab, um, www.thrivehealthlab.com. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Coach Lala. Stay tuned. We'll be back for more. Good morning, Lala. And even a talk show. And recently, I had my aha moment. I was hosting a live event. A woman who represented a national cancer support community gently pulled me aside from the glitz and the glam, and she thanked me for mentioning their program on my show. Because of those few words that I had spoke on air earlier that week, one of our viewers battling cancer reached out and got the financial and emotional support she so desperately needed. I'm so grateful to have experienced that moment, a moment that truly reflects how much conversation and community matters. We need more of what matters. It is my passion and purpose to create content and lead a conversation that will ignite the light in my community and empower them to live their best lives starting today. I'm Jez Moye, and I'm a host on EverTalk TV. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We're so excited to feature my friend Tally's, the founder of Luxury Airbnb. Yes. Um, kinda, we kinda. call it that way. Kinda that, yeah. yeah. So explain that to us. What does that yeah. mean exactly? Um, it's a long story how it starts, yeah. but the end of that is uh, actually what we do is we connect clients with homeowners um, and save all the hustle that I had to go through to find a property for myself. So, but these aren't just, you know, any kind of properties or studio apartments. These are the, like, luxury, yeah. quintessential, modern California superhomes. That's the leave the dream property. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's properties that you can't find, that you can't Google them, and property that um, homeowners don't want to expose as well. It's more uh, specialized in private clientele. Very exclusive. Um, kind of exclusive. Uh, that's why we kind of introduce ourselves as the new luxury Airbnb. Um, we also take it really personal. So as soon as you have a request or event or a dinner or you just want to spend a great night with your wife or friends, uh, you just want to leave the dream either for one day or for one hour or for a week or for a month. Um, <clears throat> it's really hard to do it without this type of business. So tell us though, Break it down for us. If you want to live the dream even just for one night, where are people staying? People stay in uh, mansions. <laughs> <laughs> people stay in the hills. People stay in Malibu. People <laughs> flying around the world to the most exclusive properties. But wait, isn't that illegal for them to rent it out for a night or for a week? Yes, of course, this is legal. It mm. is? It is, oh. yeah. Mm. Interesting. There is, there is Airbnb that do it legal. Um, there is uh, multiple platforms that do it legal, and we just one of them. We connect the client with the homeowner, um, and then we go through all the qualifications. Of course, there's contract, there's deposits, there's. What is your dream? You're letting people experience uh, living the dream, the Beverly Hills lifestyle, even just for a night. Well, what is your dream with all this? Um, I, I live my dream right now, just to be involved with type of clientele and people like that. Um, I always thought that 
to be someone, you have to born that way and to be in the right family. And I was just, I wasn't. And uh, I'm happy that, like, even to be in a TV show like this with so many big um, or talented people that sit in a room, this is, for me, it's a major achievement. Yeah. Even me speaking that good of an English right now, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Much better English than me, trust me. It's yeah. awesome. So what would you say you've learned, like, in sort of, both the networking and the building of this business, yeah. and also sort of rubbing elbows with some of these people that are, of course, very successful, very fluent. Is there anything you've learned from these folks or from the business personally? I mean, um, I think that relationships, and be honest, is the most important thing in that business. Yeah. Um, that's what took me so far because those people usually uh, don't need the money, and you just kind of connect all the dots and you make everybody's happy. Um, you can't lie to them as well. Everybody have to be honest. And uh, what put me in my position these days is just uh, kind of my networking. So um, how do I know all the homeowners and how do we know the clientele and they're just word of mouth. So it just Keep your word, I say. Yeah. It's important to invest in your integrity and relationships yeah. in this town. They say your network is your net worth. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So please tell everyone where they can find and follow your journey and rent some of these incredible homes. Uh, we do have an Instagram account that is uh, Maimon Group, M-A-I-M-O-N Group. Uh, same as the website is uh, D Maimon Group. And then uh, we happy to help everybody for events or just regular stay or whatever you guys need. Yeah. Live the dream. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Lala Land. Welcome back to Good Morning Lala, and I'm absolutely honored to welcome Dr. Iris Arbuck back to the show and her co-author, Amy Stein. Ladies, congratulations on your launch, Beating Endo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us back. Last absolutely. time I was here was Endometriosis Awareness Month in March, and now to be back celebrating the launch of our book, Beating Endo, How to Reclaim Your Life from Endometriosis is just, it's, thank you. Congratulations on that baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, that was a baby. So tell people who might not even know what endometriosis is. Sorry, I'm so sorry my voice, you guys. Tell people what it is. Sure. So, you know, it's a, a disease that affects way too many women, 10% of women. 200 million women worldwide actually suffer from endometriosis, and it causes a whole host of symptoms from pelvic pain, painful sex, infertility, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, and it really causes women to withdraw from their lives. And it, it, scientifically what it is is when you have cells that are similar to the lining of the uterus, but they're found outside of the uterus. And month after month with hormonal stimulation, it grows and it adheres and it sticks to the bowel and the bladder and really all the different organs throughout the body. Wow. So it's, it's really devastating because there's a delay in diagnosis for most women from symptom, symptom onset to diagnosis roughly a decade. And women, yeah, women often go to see eight physicians over the course of a decade until they're diagnosed. And, and both Amy, um, we wrote the book because it's unacceptable. And the status quo is absolutely unacceptable for women to go that long suffering and pain. So this is, this is our hope is to get women diagnosed earlier. Teenagers have endometriosis. And in fact, 70% of teens who have painful 
periods actually have endometriosis. So we, we're really trying to spread awareness in the word, and it's a really holistic mind, body, East meets West approach, incorporating Amy's specialty, which is pelvic floor physical therapy, nutrition, there's green beauty. How do you create a anti-inflammatory lifestyle around you to help beat this disease? That's what I love so much about your mission, is that you really are helping people reclaim their life. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to get a diagnosis and think, okay, great, now there's surgeries, maybe I will have children, maybe I won't. But the ability and the information you've given these women now is priceless. Tell us about your mission personally. My mission personally, I had a, when I was in grad school, I had a friend of mine who had severe pelvic pain and I was trying to figure out what was going on with her. And um, I just grew a passion for pelvic floor physical therapy. And then with regard to endometriosis, my first couple patients had endometriosis and I didn't realize the impact that I can make on their lives as a physical therapist because people think like physical therapy and pelvic floor and endometriosis and irritable bowel syndrome and all these different diagnoses, uh, pelvic floor physical therapy can really be effective and have a great impact. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm uh, so impressed with the book, and I want to know um, just what you guys love most about the book. I think uh, anybody who's written a book knows that it's a real labor of love, and when it's empirically driven and all that, it's an additional, <laughs> you know, burden. <laughs> and um, what is it that you love most about the book? What is it that you're most excited about and sharing through the book? You know, anyone who knows me, I'm a glasses half full, yeah. really full person. <laughs> I'm an I'm an optimist um, with a hint of like realism, and. Whenever I'm faced with any situation, something I learned from, with, from my dad is that I like to give people the tools to really to succeed or to reclaim their lives. And yes, someone may be given the diagnosis of endometriosis, but this is really how do you beat it? How do you reclaim your life from a uh, oh, mind-body, East meets West approach? So it's, it's just instilling this isn't the end of the world, this is the beginning. So t for me, that's really why, why I wrote the book. I, I couldn't... It was painful to see so much suffering in all my patients, and, and I wanted to s give them hope, essentially. It was a real hope. So incredible to raise a glass to that last night. We have a little bit of a look at the uh, book launch party. It was so beautiful. Wow. Dr. Aaron and I, <laughs> Four Seasons, Beverly Hills Hotel, but the community that came out, we, we see Meg Whitman there. She shared an incredible story. I recognized her, obviously, from the parenthood, and her list goes on and on in IMDb, but, you know, she really honored you in saying that you gave her your life back, you know? She was in so much pain. It was just so incredible to be able to be there and celebrate. And doctors, gynecologists, therapists, who all was there? It was, what was so special, I think, to both Amy and I, is that it was a whole host of, from physicians to acupuncturists, nutritionists, pelvic floor physical therapists, gynecologists, urologists, integrative medicine docs, and, and so many more who everyone has committed to saying, this is enough, the status quo is unacceptable, this 10-year delay. And, um, and our patient advocates were yes, there. Yes, oh, we've amazing. learned the most from our patients. Mm -hmm. Really, because really? you you go through the physical therapy and you're, what 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 is missing here? You go through the nutrition, the the surgeon, but putting it all together has really helped these patients. Putting this book together is going to help so many women and teens. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice you could maybe impart on some of our viewers who have received a diagnosis of endometriosis? What is their next step? The biggest. I truly believe that most physicians give the diagnosis that this is like devastating, it's horrible, you're not going to be able to have children, and, and for some, for most, I really don't think that that's true. And this is a path to understand that if you approach this disease from a whole body perspective, including everything that you guys really strongly believe in on this show, from mindfulness, meditation, eating right, physical therapy, green beauty, the products we're using. And, and for me, I really believe it's the cornerstone of proper surgery. I'm, I'm an excision surgeon. Um, and for when the women need surgery, having excision of endometriosis, which is unfortunately not the, the it, it, it should be the standard and it is the proper treatment. However, 99% of women have the wrong kind of surgery, which is ablation of endometriosis. So I want women to know the truths 
and um, be armed with information to, to beat endometriosis. You need the prehab and the post. -hab. Yes, that's perfectly, <laughs> perfectly <laughs> sad. And you need this book. And yeah. what, what brought you two together? Just, I mean, that's a lot. I'll let you answer that, Amy. <laughs> Just fate. Yeah. <laughs> Soulmates. <laughs> um, I think our patients, I keep going back to the patients. Like our patients were the driving force mm -hmm. of making us put this book together and really wanting to help so many people and the misinformation out there and the misdiagnosis and the years of, of suffering just that's what made us do it. Yeah. Labor of love. Yeah. Yes, it, uh, it is. Absolutely. Please tell everyone where they can get more information about both of your practices and by the book. Uh, at Beyond Basics PT is our social media um, uh, in New York City, Beyond Basics Physical Therapy. And the book is HarperCollins and on Amazon. Yeah. And you can find me at, at Dr. Iris Orbuck, D-R-I-R-I-S-O-R-B-U-C-H. And I, I really hope you can reclaim your lives. We, we really, we know it works. Absolutely. We believe in you. We are Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you live Monday to Friday at 9 a.m. All of today's interviews are available as a podcast on iTunes, and the whole show is streaming on EverTalk TV, available on Apple TV and Roku. That's right. Check out these fantastic guests. DM us, send us a message. See you tomorrow. Have a great Hashtag day. Hashtag beating end up. Good morning.